What's up and welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create an awesome sports or athletics poster just like this. This can be used for a football team, soccer, dance, really anything. But my brother is actually a high school soccer coach and this week I was working on posters similar to this for his team and I was having such a blast. I was like, we need to make a video for this. This is really fun. And so I found this image on Unsplash, great website for free stock photos, highly recommend. I'll link the image below in case you wanna follow along with me in this video but I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it. So I've already done the hard work of taking this guy off of the background. So I'm gonna skip over that. If you want to learn though, how to do it, I have a video that I've made detailing on the whole process that I use. I'll link it in the description below. So click, click that if you wanna learn how to do it. But for this video, we're gonna skip right over that. So we have him already outlined, which is great. And what I'm gonna do is right click, actually I'll rename him first, player. I like to keep my layers nice and well-named. Uh, it helps with organization, especially if you're ever giving files to anyone else. It's totally a blessing to them, so you should definitely do it. Convert to smart object. This will make it easier for me to move him around and change his size. So I'm gonna bring him over a little bit. I kind of want the cropping to be a little more interesting. I don't want him totally centered. Um, I want it to feel like there's some dynamic action happening, like he's just come in for a big kick. So that's probably good for now. Uh, also, I have a color palette up here that I'm gonna be working from. I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer, a solid color and I'm going to pull from this color right here and use as my background. What's beneficial about using color fills like this, a solid color adjustment layer, is it's so easy to change. You can just double click and you can easily change your colors. Um, there are other ways of doing a background. This is by far my favorite because it's just so easy to adjust. And you'll see in a minute, we're gonna use it again in a way that'll also be super helpful. All right, so I'm gonna kind of get everything set up here. The main thing I wanna start with is the text. So I'm gonna just type Jennings High School. I don't know, that's probably high school somewhere, I'm not sure. Uh, just choosing a random place. Uh, and then I'm gonna make the text 100% white. We'll select A, Command A to select everything and center it horizontally. And then I'll bring it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna hold Command, uh, Alt and drag to make a copy. And then I'll write soccer here. And then I'm gonna just scale this up. If I hold Alt and Shift at the same time, it's gonna keep my proportions and it'll scale from the center, which is really helpful, uh, at least for me to scale from the middle because that's often how I'm wanting to scale objects up. I'll bring it down. That's just by holding Shift and hitting the up and down arrows. I can kind of nudge it a little bit to where I want it. It's looking pretty good. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually increase um, my space between my letters to 60, and then I'm gonna decrease the size of my text a little bit. I just want it to stand out visually from the word soccer and that helps do it because they're a little bit more spaced out. All right, again, we're alt dragging, bringing this down and we're gonna scale it down. Uh, I'd like to call, this is a totally random name, but I like to call him Ricardo. Um, I, I actually just Googled random last names. And so I like this last name, Medat. It's very cool. It's a little ambiguous ethnically and I like it. Uh, okay, so we'll put his name down here. And then I say he looks like he's hitting a ball from uh, from the back of the field. So he's probably gonna be like a, a defender. So we're just gonna say center defender. Feels like he'd be booting a ball upfield, keeping away from the goal. Bring this down a little bit. And we'll increase our letting again. Again, just to give that contrast. And maybe I can change my font um, weight as well. That looks pretty good. Okay, one more thing I wanna do with the text is I wanna include his number. He's number 16. So I have an idea of how to do that in kind of a neat way. Uh, I'm gonna refine his position a little bit. I want it to where he's eventually gonna overlap over this stuff. So I want him to just overlap over the word soccer, but I don't want it to be so much to where you can't read the word. So it's kind of finding that fine line there. All right, and so now for his number, I'm gonna type hashtag or pound sign for anyone who was born before 2000. Uh, hashtag 16. Uh, I'm gonna change this to a font called Abolition. This is also a Typekit font, so if you need to download it, you should be able to get it off Typekit. I'll select my, my pound symbol, and I'm going to make it superscript. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale this guy up, and I want it to kind of be behind him. What I really think would be cool is if this overlaps him, Like, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. But if I have parts of this that kind of interlock with his body and some parts are in front of him, some parts are behind him. I just feel like that could be really neat. Um, so this is probably good. And then the one thing is there's a lot of text here and I don't want this 16 to be so obnoxious and so in your face. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it to an outline. And so the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna double click on this empty space to open up my layer styles. In the blending options, I'll change my fill to nothing. So that means the fill of the shape, there's no fill anymore, there's nothing inside of it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a stroke. I'll put the stroke to center and we can set it to about 16, that looks pretty good. And one thing going back to blending options, you'll see this is important in a minute, layer mask hides effects. We're just gonna click that and I'll show you what it does in a second. All right, so this looks pretty good. I want to go ahead and do my interlocking trick with the different parts of our number. And so what I'll do is I'll click here and I'm gonna make a mask by clicking the masking button. And so now a great trick is if I hold command and I click this layer that says player, now what Photoshop does is it automatically selects the entire layer exactly as it is every pixel. And so what I can do now is if I go into this mask, with some, which a mask is basically hiding or showing the layer that it's attached to. So this is attached to our number 16, so it's either gonna hide or show um, what's underneath. And so the way it hides is you see this is all white right here. Whatever is white will be shown, whatever is black will be hidden. And so we're basically working with black and white on this mask. Uh, if I click Alt, you'll see what I'm working with. So this is all, all white right now. I'll click that. And so I'm gonna go to my brushes and I'm going to use just a general brush. And then I will shrink it down a little bit, but what I'm gonna do is I want to make it to where, sorry, one thing that's important, the 16 needs to be on top of our friend Ricardo here. Now let me try this again. I'll select with command, and then I'm going to use my black color to hide certain parts of this. So see, as I do it in black, it's gonna hide different parts of these letters. I wanna hide all this big pound sign. It doesn't need to be showing on top of his face. It's not needed. But because I've only selected his body, it's going to only hide the parts of the letter that are on top of his body, which is really helpful. And then I think it'd be kind of cool if the side of this kind of poked back out. So I'm gonna leave it like that. It's where it kind of feels like it's interlocking with him, which is a cool effect, I think. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I've got all the pieces. Command D to deselect. And there we go, now we have this interlocking number, which I think is a really cool effect. Okay, so this looks pretty good so far. I'm gonna clean up my layers just a little bit. So I'm gonna put his name together. We're gonna call that name. For the top part, I usually just say title. And I like to get these roughly in order just so it helps me to see. Okay, so next we're gonna do is we're gonna add some background effects that are gonna make it really pop, the smoke effects that you saw earlier. And then we're also gonna add some layer effects to all of our text to make that really pop. And then we should be done. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new group, uh, or a new layer, shift command in, and then I will make it a, in a solid color adjustment layer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose from these colors that I had up here. So I'm gonna choose this dark one, and I will call this dark blue, or really, it's really more like a black or a black, a black, I'll click Command J to duplicate. That might be one of my custom shortcuts. I think it is. So you can right click and then do duplicate layer. We'll make this one the dark blue. Duplicate again. And then we are going to do a light blue. And then what we're also gonna do, so I'll make sure that color's right. And I'm also gonna bring another copy of my light blue. I can just alt drag that and put it on top of my player. Right now it's covering up everything because remember, this is a mask that's being applied to the color. And since it's all white, everything is being shown. So what I'm gonna do is I want this white to be black. So once I click the layer, because my colors over here are black and white, if I click option delete or command delete, yeah, option delete, it'll fill this mask with whatever color is my foreground color over here, which is the top color. So again, I'm just gonna do this again. Option delete is gonna fill the entire space with whatever color is my foreground color. And because right here it's black, and because I've selected this mask, what it's essentially doing is hiding the mask. Hope that makes sense. Masking is a little bit tricky, but just stick with me. I promise it'll make a little more sense as I go. Okay, so here's what we have. We have all of our colors set up here. I think it looks good. Um, and then I'm just gonna group these guys together and call them smoke. All right, so for now, I'm gonna worry about these in the background, and this is gonna help us bring a lot of depth to our background. So the darkest one is in the back, and so what we'll do is we wanna bring in this cool smoke effect. And if you're looking, how do I do this? You're not gonna do it by hand. There's awesome Photoshop brushes. You can find tons online for free. I found these ones, which are, uh, which are smoke brushes. I'll link in the description below where I found them. But I'm opening my brush panel, and I just click this guy, this, this random one. And you can see the outline of the smoke here. 
I wanna make sure the color I've selected is white so I can just flip these guys. Because remember, I'm revealing the color mask now. So if I click, now it's revealing that dark color underneath, which for us just looks like dark smoke. One thing I noticed is the smoke is above the name. We wanna bring that below the name so it doesn't cover it up. Okay, gonna continue on. So I'm just gonna kind of randomly pick some different colors here and I'm just gonna paste them into the background. It doesn't really matter, or random shapes, it doesn't really matter what the order is. I'm just gonna have fun with it. I can also change the size of my brush if that's helpful up here. And I don't need this to look totally filled in because now I'm gonna go to the dark blue and we're gonna add in some more. So basically we're just layering these different colors uh, in unique ways to try and get some depth to our composition. Okay, I'm gonna go to my lightest. And this one I'm not gonna use a ton, I just want this to be kind of accents. Another shortcut to change your brush size is holding Control and Option or Alt and then scale, clicking and scaling down. So you can see the light colors, they do a lot. Let's see. Okay, looking pretty good. Make one right down there. And something I could do, I could bring this darker color on top if I wanted to. If I just bring it up, oops. And you can see it kind of changes. I think I like that a little better because the it looks like the darks are kind of popping through a little bit more. So this is pretty neat. And the reason I have one more color up here is because I also want some of the smoke to overlap with my player. I think that's important. And so what I'll do is I'll select some more smoke again. Uh, maybe this one. I'm gonna scale it down a bit. And then I'm gonna reveal some smoke that'll kind of be on top of his body. I don't want it to be too much. I want it to be pretty subtle. But I do want it to appear that he's kind of emerging from the smoke, which is kind of a neat effect. Which again, I'm not going too extreme here. I gotta make sure I keep it kind of balanced. So I'm gonna try a few different options till I find something that I like. And I also don't wanna obscure his foot because that's the part that's kicking, which is cool. Let's see. You know, maybe that's all we need. Maybe it's just kind of from this back side of him. So it feels like he's emerging from the smoke on the left. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so we have our smoke. It looks really neat. Um, and now the last thing we're gonna do to really round this off and make it look so awesome, I'm gonna bring my name up top because I don't want it to be covered by his leg, uh, is we are gonna bring in some cool effects to our text. So I'm basically gonna do it on just one of them and then we should be able to apply it to mostly all of them. So clicking on our soccer, I'm gonna double click over here to make a new layer style. And then I'm gonna to go to an option called Outer Glow. So Outer Glow, I'm gonna set my blending mode to normal, set my color to white. I can change my opacity however I want it. But as you can see, it creates this slight glow around the letters, which feels a little neon. It feels like very punchy. It's really cool. Um, and then you can change your size as well. I don't want it to be so big that it's kind of getting faded. I want it to be really tight around the letters to where it just feels like the letters themselves are lightly glowing. I like that, click okay. Instead of doing this, a bunch of different times, I can just right click here, copy the layer style, and then I'm gonna paste it onto this type. There we go. So because the type is smaller, I'm gonna need to actually go in and adjust that outer glow just a little bit and bring in the size because it's kind of making the text hard to read. There we go. Just enough to where it's glowing a little bit. Since soccer is so big, it can afford a little bit more of that glow. Now I'll copy this one as well. Then I'm gonna go to my name, Right click, paste layer style. Looks good. And then right click, paste layer style. I might have to adjust this one a little bit as well because I don't want to make it illegible. Uh, we'll go down just a little on that size. Let's try 10. And that might be too little. So again, it's kind of a little bit of a, a, a game where we're trying to get the perfect amount. Let's go 12. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the same thing to our uh, to our 16. Because we've already made that fill, remember when we clicked on here and we changed our fill to zero and the layer mask hides, or the layer mask hides effects, I never showed you what that did. So if I unclick it, you can see that the outline is outlining around where this mask is, which we don't want because it kind of ruins our illusion. So when we keep it clicked, it'll make sure that the mask covers those effects, which is helpful. 
So because we have all these effects already on here, we don't wanna just paste that old layer effect style that we were just using. Instead, we'll just go in here on our own and redo the outer glow. It looks a little too subtle here because the letters are so big. So I'm gonna scale it up on the size. Give it a nice glow, looking good. Okay, one more thing that I forgot, which could be helpful, and you don't have to do this, but is adding a drop shadow. And it doesn't have to be too dramatic, but it just helps these letters stand out a little bit. Like, look how great that looks. That 16, you don't really know why, but it really feels like it jumps out at you. And I also have the option of doing the same thing for the other type. Let's see, I could add drop shadow. Again, that's pretty subtle. It's not totally necessary, but um, it could just make a little bit of more interesting composition. All right, so that's pretty much all I have. And that is how you create a really cool athletics poster. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you are trying to create these, hopefully you use your own image and do something interesting. Don't just follow this template and In innovate, create something new, create something exciting. And if you like this video, I would love to invite you to like the video. It helps me so much, helps the channel. And if you like it so much that you just wanna see so much more content, I post new videos every week and there's always more things to learn. So go ahead and subscribe as well. And if there's something that you're really dying to learn, drop a comment below. Let me know a video that you're really interested in seeing and I will add it to my list and see if I can make it for you. All right, well, that's all I have for today. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.